good evening. May. Absolutely. May I torture you now? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm Eugenia Dallas. I live in Los Angeles. I'm in the United States since 1951, American citizen. And, uh, and I travel, I give presentations. Genocide uh, of Ukraine is extremely important to me because maybe because my parents' family were destroyed and whole Ukraine destroyed and I did see, I experienced, I witnessed these tragedies that uh, it stays for, with me forever. These sketches, they are mine and the couple there. I uh, painted them uh, first with the charcoal but it's too dirty so I started with watercolor. <laughs> All right. I, um, there are some more people coming. Wonderful. Great. Well, plenty of seats. Eh? Sure. I will start it to give you a little bit. I'm sure that you know, but uh, some of them maybe don't, that Kiev was the center of Rus principality. Principality, I don't pronounce it. Cynthia ruled most of Ukraine. From 8th century, with the rise of Kiev, Kian Rus, in 980, Prince Volodymyr formed a strong empire, Kiev Rus called, today it's called Ukraine. Christianity was adopted in 988, 988. Intermarriages between princesses and uh, European kingdom were done and uh, princess with uh, Yaroslava, she became a queen of France by married king and, and she brought with her uh, the, she was a very educated woman, and she brought with her Ukrainian Bible. And uh, still today that Bible is used uh, for dignitaries uh, to take it off. Due to constant wars, Kiev Rus become unpopulated. Wars with Poland, uh, other Western countries, uh, Raids, kidnapped by uh, Turk, Turk, uh, turning Ukrainian youth into slavery. In 1654, Bogdan Khmelnytsky, at that time he thought would be the best, to sign the pact, friendship, with Moscow. Uh, he didn't want to go with Poland because of the religion at that time uh, was a very important religion, but uh, that was then. So he signed um, with uh, friendship with uh, Moscow. In no time, Russia immediately turned Ukraine into colony. Peter the Great, I don't know why he called the Great, he didn't do so much good for humanity, also the Catherine the Great. Uh, Peter the Great, he took the name Rus and make Russia. All right. Catherine, German born, by the marriage she become queen of Russia. She Russified, she immediately introduced the law to Russify all these 104 nations that did belong to Russia and, uh, and make there introduce the slavery. And actually the farmers become slaves since when they were on the farms and uh, they, were, they were needed work so uh, the slavery was introduced by the Catherine the Great. It was very harsh for these people in the tremendous poverty because first when the landlord would rent 
the the land to whoever wanted uh, would rent. Many Jewish people took in the rent this uh, land, and it come there uh, Ukrainian slaves, Ukrainian farmers. It was tremendous poverty. Before, first they started to work only three to four days, and then five days, then six days, and these people really had no time for themselves. To And was poverty terrific. Uh, my grandfather was one of the slaves, and um, he uh, my grandfather was delivering uh, some water, the horse and the buggy with the water, he was delivering this. But he would fall to sleep, or maybe he didn't sleep night before, or just boring, and he would to, uh, fall to sleep. There, uh, Count of, um, would approach him from the back and hit him with the, with the whip. That happened a few times, and then my grandfather just grabbed that whip and hit him or something, I don't know. He was uh, arrested and sent. At uh, that time, they wouldn't send them to prison. They sent them to the army for 25 years, harsh labor. Tsars, Russian Tsars, they hated the Jews. Jews were not allowed to live in Russia. It was... And they... They could move to Ukraine and other places, and they, they had the freedom to move to Ukraine. Chorna Sotnia was organized, that means Chorna Sotnia means hundred uh, black hundreds. Chorna means black Sotnia hundred. They would be sent to Ukraine to kill, to create the pogroms, to kill the one Jewish person. Uh, kill one Ukrainian child and blame a Jewish person. At this, in this particular uh, village, there was, uh, did happen this. And the um, whole village stood up for that Jewish young man. But this uh, Chorna Sotnia uh, did create many, many pogroms in Ukraine. Today, Jew Jewish people, I have quite few friends, they do give wrong information about this because they don't know the history. They give information that the Ukrainians did it. Ukrainians are very soft, gentle by their nature, democratic people. And they, for them, during the last war, they saved lots of people. If the Germans would find that it happened, they would put all of them, the Ukrainian family and the Jews, against the wall and shoot them. Tsar Nikolai started the war in 1914 to help the Serbs, okay. But in 1917, country fell apart. And the Tsar was executed with all his family. Many aristocrats perished. Many, many people were killed. At that time, Karl Marx wrote... Um, books on the so-called Marxism, whatever it is, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, all over Europe the Marxism was brewing, was exciting times for that, that period of time. Germany was afraid of Marx, Karl Marx and his theory, his books. And what they done it, they collected all the Marxist activists, put them in the Switzerland in their seal trains, and they sent them to St. Petersburg. The Marxists installed the Marxist theory. With the fall of Russia, Tsarist Russia, 1917, Ukraine in 1918 became independent, democratic, sovereign republic. Petlura was leader from 1918 to 21. Hordes of ignorant people followed the manipulation of Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin. Trotsky at that time, uh, he was in prison by a Tsarist Russia, he sent to, uh, uh, to Siberia. 
for his uh, activities. And he uh, bought a passport uh, from guard by the name Trotsky. But uh, his name was Leon Abramovich, I think, uh, Bronstein. And he, uh, but he kept this name, Trotsky. Ukraine was occupied by the communists, and uh, Trotsky was tremendous orator, manipulator, organizer. Lenin at that time gave a land to farmers, and they were extremely happy that uh, uh, that they get a farm, that they can uh, have their own farm. And um, but in no time, about uh, in 28, 29, uh, they started communists were started to take away. Uh, the land because they decided no one knew it, what they were doing everybody uh, doing all kind of experiences so that they decided to take uh, Lenin uh, and later Stalin after 24 Lenin died in 1944 with uh, still uh, Trotsky and Stalin they uh, give the land they took land away confiscated and uh, and, uh, and these farmers, they become enemy of people. They call them kulaks, enemy of the people. We are each the walking pieces of history. I have my own story to tell and have authored a book that walks through history, hardship, happiness, and humanitarianism. One woman, five lives, five countries. This is the book. I designed myself this book. There is painting, there is sketches, there is poems, there is letters from Barbara Bush, Mrs. Clinton, President Clinton, Elie Wiesel, which writes about Jewish people, I write about Ukrainian people. It is true life story. It is captivating story. It is bone chilling nightmare of a child. In Ukrainian language it called Nemeraya Dusha Nasha, which I don't particularly uh, approve because it was done in Ukraine without me. Uh, but uh, next printing if I do I will call Dole Serotiz Ukrainsko na Holotomor. It is um, destiny of Ukrainian what? <laughs> of Ukrainian orphan, whatever it is. <laughs> That's my planning to do. This book was uh, compared to Dr. Zhivago. And Dr. Zhivago, there is a big love of, uh, and uh, misery, misery, and ends with that. This story, I have uh, many admirers for this book, especially American people. Uh, they, um, who read the book, oh, everyone said they should be made into film misery from beginning and uh, happy ending and Americans love happy endings I'm speaking from my own experience but I did see what I went through the bitterness of life I started to write my story in 1990 every page was a very painful experience for me it is agonizing to remember, to think about, to talk about misery that I led from five, six years of life. My book, four, first four, four chapters of 13, is written about Ukrainian innocent people that perished so unjustly, 1932-33 only in one year. Over 10 million people die by excruciating church of starvation. <laughs> Stalin was determined to crush all vestiges of Ukraine nationalism. The man-made famine was accompanied by devastating purges of Ukraine intellectuals for which was 20 percent. 
80% were farmers, agricultural country. The artificial famine broke the people's will to resist the collectivization. Ukraine politically, socially, psychologically traumatized. You could be arrested for, execu uh, arrested, executed, and deported for handful hidden grain and call enemy of the people. A whole family would be punished with children, infants, all sick were loaded into cattle trains and shipped to the northern region of Siberia. Many perished on the way and the one that reached the destination were dumped in primitive condition. I think I have one of my sketches there, over here, by that train there, if you find. Pull out the weapon. No, no. Pull out. Yeah, the train. So there has to be the last this one. This is the last one, of course. <laughs> and this is one that people would be put in these trains the lucky one that died on the way to Siberia. Prosperous farmers like my father were the first to be arrested. My father would not believe that he would be victim and would be called Kulak, enemy of the people, since his own father was a slave to the count of the village in 1840. That shows you how old I am. And though I don't know exactly. <laughs> I may be even older what is written. <laughs> Collectivization started very strongly and we were forced to give our house away. Animals, everything. It was confiscated without asking us if we wanted or not to join the collectivization. Our house, land, animal forcefully taken away. With all that wealth, we become homeless overnight. During the day, we starve. During the night, we were arrested. That's the life was in Ukraine. As exodus of the farmers increased up north to Russia, where there was no famine, Soviets were determined to keep the farmers confined to their villages. It was strictly forbidden to leave their villages. The collectivization in Ukraine was met with the strong resistance of the farmers. The attempt to be behead the Ukrainian nation by destroying talented people, the most ruthless attack, were introduced against intellectuals. The last blow to the farmers was to break their back spiritually so they would accept collectivization. Food was used as a weapon. Unarmed, disorganized, leaderless, the farmers were crushed mercilessly. Stalin declared the farmers are basic for a seeing national movement, and without them there can be no strong movement. The Stalin regime and his allies introduced man-made genocide. Famine, I should say first. Genocide, 1932-33 in Ukraine. Students were revolting. It was a terrible time, and um, revolting the aggression of the communists, but in no time they would, they, would be, they would be put down with savagery. My brother, which was studying in academy in Kiev, only in his university 3,000 students were arrested and sent to Siberia in harsh labor prisons as political criminals. He returned back spiritually broken man.